Live to tape from the Palacio Cinema in Tampa, Florida, with your host, Andy Signor. He may have lost the fight, but he'll win the war. This is Nerd Wars. Hello, I'm Andy Signor, and I'm happy to be back here in Tampa, Florida with some of my friends, the biggest nerds I know here, and we're going to battle it out with some of the awesomest questions in nerddom. We're talking movies, we're talking TV shows, we're talking video games, we're talking all sorts of pop culture, and you're going to hear it here. It's three rounds, and then we're going to do a special bonus round that's so much fun, I can't wait to show you. But before I do any of that, I have to thank someone. I have to thank this week's sponsor, Kerry Culpepper of the law firm Culpepper IP. This guy believed in me and helped me get back out there and what brought this new show to you. So thank you, Carrie. Stay tuned for more fun stuff. This is it. Uh, but first up, this show, Nerd Wars. Here's how it works. Three rounds, and we have two teams. First up, we have the Avengers. And we have the AA meetings. <laughs> now, you guys are going to be doing three uh, special uh, wars here. The first one's going to be Sexiest Avenger, oh, which yeah. you two are going to be battling. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to do Most Over-the-Top Stephen King Death Scene. And then our main event will be Is Disney Destroying Nerd Culture? After that, we'll be playing a new mini game that I'm so excited to present to you called Who's the Best? Stay tuned. These guys know how it is. It's fun. Uh, and that's how the show's going to work. It's a team round. So the way this works is we've, de we've decided which member of the team will fight each round, but... Each player is allowed to tap in at one point during the debate to chat to help their opponent. Now, you guys are, don't let, have to let them tap in. That's your choice as fighters here. You don't have to let them tap in, or you can let them tap in. But either way, that's think, how I'll this will work. It. I'll definitely think so think it over. It. That's how it's going to work. So first round, we're getting right into it. We're going to do the sexiest Avenger. But before we start, it's time to meet the AA meetings. Here's your team. What's up, Neckbeards? I'm Danny. I'm an alcoholic. I like Magic the Gathering, Harry Potter, and I'm a Hufflepuff. I'm Lynn. When I'm not running events for nerds like gaming nights or writing for and running nerdy trivia, I'm glued to my rig for PC gaming. My top fandoms are Star Trek Next Gen, Alien, and anything horror. Hello, my name's Don. I work at a call center. I love anime, Transformers, cooking, and I've also been known to cosplay. Danny, Lynn, and Adon, awesome to meet you guys. That was a lot of fun. Uh, you, how, are you guys excited for this round? I'm so Absolutely. excited. All right, Chris. next up, let's meet the Avengers. What? Hey, you wonderful nerds. My name's Andrew. I'm a software developer, big Star Wars fan, and my unpopular opinion would be I love the Matrix trilogy. My name's Shannon Lynch, and I'm an academic nerd. That means I do research, so I came here to win. My fandoms, Harry Potter and Supernatural. Hi, my name is Sam Witten. I'm a lifelong IT nerd. I host Nerd Brew events here in Tampa, Florida, and I think everything was better back in the 90s. Comics, books, movies, all of it. Andrew, Sam, and Shannon, so awesome to have you here. Are you guys nervous? Uh, no, awesome. we're going to win. I'm awesome. I'm never nervous. All right. Well, first up from uh, Team Avengers, we got Andrew mm -hmm. and Danny, and you guys are going to be tackling the sexiest Avenger. Uh, Andrew, let's hear you. Who are you going to pick? All right. Well. I like I, not to get semantical or anything, but sexy can the word itself can describe it is 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 quite long. It's not just uh -oh. physical characteristics, all right? Spit it's it mental out, dude. and everything. And you know, and when you think about it in that term, um, I have to go with the one and only T'Challa. I have to go with Black Panther. Ooh, all right, Danny, who are you picking? I'm picking Iron Man for obvious reasons. We got Iron Man versus T'Challa. All right, duke it out. Ladies first. Go ahead, Ooh. Danny. Hmm. Okay, well... Trying to be a gentleman here. Let's... Let's... <laughs> let's not do that. Okay. So, Iron Man. He's rich. He's got that bad boy-esque. He's got a sense of humor. Like, he's got basically... He's... 100% on like paper. He's good on paper. Like it's something Danny, he's, good he's on. responsible for almost killing the entire planet with Ultron. Oh, is that right? what, that's what we're doing? I'm just saying. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm throwing it out there he right was, now. You, he okay. almost killed everyone with the well, super bots. I mean, just saying. I'm just saying in Black Panther, it definitely says that uh, he couldn't even save his own father. But, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> You're going to talk about my father like that? <laughs> All right, but you were saying he's good on paper. Give me the broad He's stroke. great on paper. He's got he's got a, he's got his own company for one. Like he's got billions of dollars. He's actually smart, which a lot of people overlook. They overlook his uh why are you looking at me like his that? His brain? His brain. Yeah, they overlook it. He's, <laughs> he's just, Why am I looking? I'm he's just, not looking at me like this bitch. Like, uh, he's no. He's trying to win, Andrew. I'm, I understand. He's cheating. No, he's just trying to psych you out. I can help block it's him. Working. Okay. It's working. It's right, working. Okay. So he's, he's got a brain. With a big point. Brains, sense of humor, money. You know, he's not boring. Like, like. The problem with most of these uh, rich guys that are in the uh, comic book world, like, I'm not trying to 
dig on anybody but <laughs> Tatala. They're really boring. Like they're just boring to talk to. Like they can't really hold a conversation. There's not much comedic value in them. And I know it doesn't sound like true, but girls do like a sense of humor. Like a sense of humor goes a long way. And what's your uh, what's your response? <laughs> to that? He he can definitely get the girl. That is true. He I'll, I'll give him that. He's definitely a smart man. He can get the, he can get the girl. But T'Challa, he's a king. He comes from a, uh, uh, he's a king of a country, in a, uh, of a different culture. He has an accent. He has <laughs> an accent. One. He has a very sexy accent, mm -hmm. number one. Also, by the end of Black Panther, his, his solo film, he, he changes the world completely by bringing out that technology uh, to, to um, what was it, Oakland? You know, I'm assuming we'll, we'll see it in the future of Marvel movies that the rest of the world are going to slowly catch up to Wakanda. Okay, so he's changed the world like no, like Elon Musk is trying to do, that Steve Jobs tried to do with the iPhone. Nothing is more sexier than that. Is changing the world. Not only that, but he started his. He went from away from tradition in his own country, but and then he opened their like almost like a mini political political rev, revolution there. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate that. And and for me, there's nothing sexier than that. And also, again, you talk about rich, you talk about this and that. Again, he comes from a country that is the wealthiest, most technologically advanced country on earth. He's sexy, he's got the accent, he's changed the world, he's got the suit, he's got the fighting skills. All right, so let's pick he's that got apart. Who, so we have accent and changing the world, mm -hmm. and we have sort of, a, uh, you said, has a business and a sense he's, of humor. Yeah, sense of humor, he's got a great, uh, he's got that drive that a lot of people just don't have. He's. Why he's, do I want to date? This Avenger. Tell so well, me again. Date. Versus, if I had these two on that Tinder, that doesn't make what? him sexy. Like, no, I, I, he's sexy. He's not one that you want to date. He's wanna, one that you want to like just. Ooh, you want to fuck this? You want to? Right. T'Challa, you want to marry T'Challa? Don't get me wrong. T'Challa, you want to marry? Thank you. You he won my argument sexy. for me. Uh, he's uh, good. No, I think it's over. He's I think I won. You said marry. He's done. He's no, a sexy man. he's not sexy. My man he's is on People man. Magazine's he's, top 100 people. He's, he's a good man. One. My man is on. He will be on like you know, sexiest man alive cover. That's. Iron listen, Man. Listen, Iron Man one, is the sexiest thing, thing, man alive. He there's one thing. What do you say about that? What? He, she's got a good point of you want to marry. You, you want to marry T'Challa. You don't want to fuck. Totally, marriage is not wanna, sexy. Don't fuck him. Not We're playing F marry. Oh my God. No, no, no. It's Elsa, not there's sexy. One thing. <laughs> marriage is a good thing. But I get her point. Thing. No, no, no. But T'Challa has one thing over of Tony that Tony doesn't have. He doesn't have um, a, a little sense of suave. He doesn't have a trademark. What kind of forever, baby? What? He's got that all day. Oh, that, what a cultural uh, phenomenon! A How sexy was that to see every every generation suit. doing that? I've seen I've seen kids, I've seen grandparents do it in the streets. Mm. It's nuts. You're, That's sexy to me. He changed the world. He changed pop culture. Uh, what a what a cultural phenomenon! Okay. It's a sexy man, and oh, this popcorn is pretty good. Popcorn all right, look, I'm just I'm just saying <laughs> you're good, man. you're explaining why T'Challa is a good man. You're explaining why he's good popular. Good man is sexy. You are not are explaining why he is sexy. Are like he's he is not the he's person that jokes. I would he take made the to bed. What are those? Like, he, look, he reacted I'm, to I'm, Iron Man could tie me down, okay? And do <laughs> whoa, 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 he whoa, wants. whoa! T'Challa, I'm like, yo, I will marry you. I'll cook for you, maybe you know, every once in a while. You're, like, he's a king, baby. You don't need that. You got a chef, homie. He's a king. That's not sexy. <laughs> you it's got a not, chef, homie. It's comfort. Comfort and sexy are two different things. That is comfort. That's the man that I would snuggle with during the winter time. You know, like the chubby guys that you like want hey, to cuddle. It's not time. sexy being a man child. It's not sexy a being a playboy. Flame. It's not sexy. That's he's that was chubby. Flame. That was sexy. And no, he's not chubby. That was sexy like in the eighties, baby. This is 2018. In our day and age, you want you want men that have. That 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 whatever Listen, that word is, I'm looking for. I'm a chubby so chaser. On. I love my chubby man. I'm not. T'Challa's gonna... not chubby. He's not chubby. Then who's his chubby? His personality is chubby, though. What, what does that mean? <laughs> <is that> even... <laughs> All right. I mean, yeah, that yeah, make sense? I, before we go into what you're into, that's that, that's fair. But I'm curious. <laughs> what is? So I understand her definition of sexy. Give me your definition of sexy. So obviously Andrew. it's physical, but it's but it encompasses everything about the person, the, the, the character, their their personality, their wisdom, what they've done. Uh, you know, for example, why women find sexy uh, those entrepreneurs because they're trying to open a business. That that's also can be sexy, right? So sexy encompasses you know a range of of, of things. You know what it doesn't? Boring. How is that boring? Boring is never going to be sexy. King, right, so tell is sorry. me why he's a fucking. Oh, sorry, change the world. <laughs> you can curse here. We're okay, sorry, sorry. We're kids. adults. We're adults. I'm um, definitely so, over twenty. Right. I know I look like twelve. In your but... closing words here, I'm mm -hmm. curious. Okay. 
I admit you clearly want to fuck him. No, I, did, and that's sexy to you. I'll fuck T'Challa too, but like not like what? not like. What? She is, again. She man. just she, she's going back. Iron Man. She said Mary. Now she's fucking. So I, I think we win. I, I think we win. I think we're going sense. for the gold here. I think we're Michael Phelps territory right now. No, you're not Michael Phelps territory. I think you're delusional. Is what I think. All right. Yeah, we're huh? talking sexy. We're, we're not talking, talking sexy. best husband here. We're talking sexy. We're talking so. sexy. Iron Man is sexy. I understand her argument sexy. there. You're telling He's me it's sexy boy. to be married. That's I, I can see your point. But I need a little bit more from you here in your closing words here. Why is he the sex? Why is T'Challa sexier than Tony Stark? All right, so to recap Stark? again. Why is he sexier than Tony Stark? Why is he sexier than Tony Stark? He's changed the world on a fundamental level for human beings going forward. He's got he's got a woman in his back pocket on the way. But you know, would he spank me, though? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Oh, he'll spank. He's a mm. king. He's he's Black Panther. He will claw you. He won't spank you. He That's will not claw sexy. Your ass. He will claw That's not you. Sexy. That is so sexy. He's like, he's like, he's like, no, he's the way. Him? Are you trying to tap in? Though? <laughs> you trying to tap in? It's closing on right, you. Right, we're gonna late. tap in with you. It's too late. Right. We're closing. Oh, okay. This is too late. Shannon's gotta explain why why Black Panther's sexier. Get in there, Shannon. Black Panther's sexier because when he fights for his pride, he is shirtless. With falling down. Oh my god, I can just watch that. And Tony Stark, he's great, but he's become an uncle now with Peter Parker. It's just not the same. So I can I can cool. just I can just watch T'Challa just fight for his kingdom and I'm okay. Tony Stark, ten years ago, yes, but Mm, move on. We're on to new events. No, no, no. It's, I, I, no, Tony Stark is that like one, baby. He's like one older. Well, he well, gets well, some well, fucking well, more well, delicious well. he is. I'm going to tap in, actually. Oh, Adon would like to uh, okay, Adon, say some few go words. Go ahead. Take the headphones, ahead, Adon. Jump in. Could, could Aunt May be an tap the hand. All right. So you're, you're giving him your closing remarks. Here we go. It's, I got to say, they they did just tip the scale. So, Adon, I need you to do it. Let's just put it this way. <laughs> Black Panther is not sexy at all. He is quite centrally the person that you talk to that will put you asleep. Mm -hmm. Tell that to and my lady parts. <laughs> how about you tell that to the 10 other ladies that are around him, his personal guards, who are his ladies in wait. I don't that care about that. No, that's less that's competition. His that's less competition for me. <laughs> Nothing sexy about totally that. I am totally fine with that. Oh my goodness. He is and boring. All the things that were argued before, his Tony voice, Stark has done before. His voice is like smooth radio jazz. I could oh, just shit. listen to that. <laughs> smooth radio jazz. Smooth radio jazz sleep. with an accent, that's baby. It's that accent. It's accent like listening to AM sexy. radio. He could talk to me in my bed, and I would just forget about the work day. I'd be like, yeah, I don't no. have to get. He's worth skipping Mondays. There's for. a reason why they say nice boys finish last. Mm. Oh, I want to finish last you with him. You want to finish last. <laughs> <laughs> in this regards. You don't want that. You want oh, I, the I bad boy. I you want the guy it. who's going no. around. No, who I want someone who leaves tricks. and can tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. La I'm about to call it. You sing a final thing. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. say a final Last, thing. Well, you'll let you close it. Do you want to have the yeah, closing thought? Yeah, close Thank yeah. you. Tapped in, yeah. Shannon. That was you. Trust me, you helped him. <sighs> Quickly, ten seconds. Go. Oh, ten seconds. Yes, don't go. put pressure on me like that. Oh, fine, eleven seconds. Just talk. Okay. Look. T'Challa is a man that you want to marry. He's not like that one that you want to fuck over and over again. I want him to, like Tony Stark can tie me down and spank me, and you know he will spank me. You know he will. T'Challa, no, he's not gonna spank me. He's gonna treat me with respect, and respect does not belong in the bedroom. No one wants daddy issues <laughs> anymore. Tony Stark is a fa basically a father figure for Peter Parker. You want a king in the bedroom, you want a panther in the bedroom. That's what we got with King T'Challa, and also, Again, he's changed the world. He's he's saving lives. Saving all right, I, got, I heard enough. Wow, bravo! First of all, that was that was fun. You guys brought it. All right, here's where I net it out. Not uh, bad. Audience can chime in too, but uh, you had me. You had me the whole time, and then Shannon came ah, in. Ah man, Shannon! Yeah. Shannon really came in, and the one that, that made it really was that sh not only the shirtless part, which which I really enjoyed your your description, oh. but when you knocked down uh, that, it was the his he's now the uncle. I gotta say that's true. Ten years ago, bad boy Tony Stark, I'm with you, but that you really got him. That you knocked him down really well with the daddy stuff. Oh, God, he wants a kid now. He wants a kid. I and I think, I uh, you know, look, you, ideally you do marry someone you you have sex with all the time. T'Challa, you guys got the first win. You won the first war. The Avengers, round one. All right, time for round two. Most over the top Stephen King death, and I've already rotated in Lynn. 
and Shannon. I'm so happy to have you both. As Shannon, good work on that last round. You did help. Danny and Don, great work, but Shannon really brought it there at the end. So let's see if you can continue that in round two here. Most over the top Stephen King death, are, you, I think you guys can bring up the books, but we're really focused on the movie scenes here. Uh, and uh, let's hear what you both picked. Uh, Lynn, tell us what movie and death scene you're picking. All right, so it wasn't that great of a book or a movie, but it was a really great death scene. It would be Dreamcatcher, and it would be where the, uh, the shit weasel decides to come on out of the first stranger oh. and then kill, uh, I believe it was uh, Beaver, Beaver yes, that he killed. Lee. Yes, Jason Lee. Okay, and Shannon, what movie are you, what scene are you picking? I'm going to say that's going to be a hard one for me to debate, but I got one. It's uh, from the movie Maximum Overdrive, and the scene is with the coach during a Little League baseball game getting killed by a vending machine. All the kids run screaming and get run over by cars and flattened. These sound like Tarantino movies. These are both. I've seen, we watch <laughs> these scenes. These are great scenes. All right. Word out. All right. All right. Who's going first? I'll go first. So. Yeah, go. Come on, Shannon, you got this. Okay, okay. The reason why Crash this burn. scene by itself is one of the most outrageous is the first to start with the nature of what even created this film. Stephen King had a lot of anger issues with the fact that um, The Shining came out and it wasn't done to his vision. And he felt that he was losing creative control of his movie. So he wanted to be the director. He wanted to be the writer. He wanted complete control of this project, which was maximum overdrive in 1986 so the whole film itself is just an atrocity and <laughs> it's just one funny scene after the other but the one thing that you can remember the most is a death done by product placement coca-cola cans being whipped in the face the eyes the groin boom knocked over kids are screaming ah! and then they run up the hill and they just get steamrolled and flamed on the road is the most ridiculous thing. You're like, what did I just watch? So you feel like you're tripping, which you know it's a Stephen King book and thing when you're on acid when you're not on acid. <laughs> and, and then you just have product placement, which tells me he was running out of money and needed something, so he quickly wrote that scene <laughs> into the film. And, Mid-80s, oh, Stephen King, oh yeah. Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah, and the fact is just, this was his baby. He toted it forever. And you can even watch the theater ads of him going like, original Stephen King all the way, king of horror. And it's just, it's just the worst film and the worst amazing outrageous death ever. All right. Hard to, this is a, this is a, that's a good one. What are you going to say to that, Lynn? That is a really hard one to top. So... An alien comes down. He's made of fungus. <laughs> he forms his entire life cycle within human beings. So what they do is the, the gray comes down as an adult. They shoot out spores. A person breathes in the spores. And the spores can just potentially grow as well. You know, whatever. But uh, uh, so, so the spores grow. They breathe in the spores. Uh, it somehow makes its way into their digestive tract. It becomes... Uh, a birum. It's called a birum for the virus fungus, and it's actually basically just a big old dick. It's a, it's a, it's called a shit weasel. Uh, it's called a lot of things, butt weasel, all sorts of things. Is it called but that in a book? Sorry, it is. Okay, it is. Okay, it's, okay. It's, it's, it's not your call because it looks. It's referred okay, to okay. as an ass movie. weasel, a butt weasel, okay. a shit Rain weasel, down, several yes. things. But it basically, it just looks like a, a big old long wiener with at the at the very end of it, instead of having eyes or any or ears, anything like that, it's just got a maw of just teeth all the way down. And I'm sure we can do a picture or something like that. So basically, uh, this, this thing grows inside of the host. The host doesn't realize it because it's telepathic. Eventually, it eats its way out through the anus. So this is what happened. They picked up a stranger uh, uh, on the side of the road. He was kind of out of it, and he was burping and farting nonstop. Uh, they bring him in, and then they leave. They come back, and it's just blood everywhere. Like he was laying in bed, puddle of blood, puddle of blood all the way to the bathroom. They get to the bathroom. Uh, uh, he has died on the bathroom despite the fact that he had responded to them, which means that some, some kind of sentience was still possible even after death, somehow. And then uh, uh, he tips over, turns out there's a giant hole where his butt used to be, and inside of the toilet is this strange dick monster. The dick monster <laughs> uh, uh, kills... <laughs> uh, uh, it it uh, kills Beaver by he decides to bend over and he tries to pick up a, a, a toothpick because he's an Why? idiot and then it yeah. knocks him off he slips in the blood and he falls on the ground so the very first thing he does so he starts to stand back up and he tries to sit back down on the toilet the thing comes up out of the toilet 
and it bites. Or no, sorry, it doesn't bite. It bites him in the movie. In the in the the book, it wraps its tendril around it. But anyway, it pops one of his balls immediately. Oh. So testicle gone. Sorry, male audience. Then, uh, <laughs> uh, then it decides to bite the back of its neck. S- squirms up, bites the back of his neck. He falls down. They tussle for a bit. Uh, uh, when he hears Jonesy run up, there was an actual line in the book that said it got hard like a dick. So it nearly <laughs> crushed his rib cage, getting suddenly incredibly hard by the fact that somebody was coming up. And then uh, uh, it slides up. Eventually, it bites off his fingers, all of them in one bite. Or I'm sorry, everything except for the pinky. And then it proceeds to eat his face while he is trying to keep it from killing Jones. All right, you, you picked ridiculous scenes, so I love them both. But why <laughs> is yours more over the top is the word we use here. So go ahead. Mine's over the top. Go ahead, talk, and you can talk more in your mic. Sir. Mine's over the top because, one, obvious product placement. Coca-Cola, man. It's just, <laughs> how are you good at, you just, you can't even look at the death. You're just like, sip with friends and family, die with friends and family. I love Coca-Cola. I'm biased, but it's a product placement ad. Aww. And it's clearly... Clearly, product placement ad. It, he gets whipped several times with the vending machine, and there's a scene in the movie where he's like, mm. and that's how he falls and dies. He's like, mm. <laughs> it's like the stupidest way to die. And then you have all these little kids screaming and then running away. And so, see, how is that more over the top than a shit weasel? <laughs> um, because we've seen alien deaths before, it's kind of a mock of the alien death movie itself with it coming out of the stomach. So. Stephen King just made it dirtier and funnier, so it's like a party game. But it's not like, why did this, how did someone come up with this? Can you imagine a xenomorph that explodes out of your asshole (laughs) and eats another man in the face immediately? I could if they were making disaster movies back then. Oh, no. (laughs) Nobody ever needs to remake another disaster movie ever again. We so, have alien deaths all the time. So you can tell that, that dreams can explode out of buttholes no, but and you, then eat other you people. You can tell that this is this is their well. this scene is mocking a sort of genre like alien deaths and taking it to the extreme. So it's not really outrageous. It's just taking something to to a different tilt to something a little bit more crazy. A but, vending machine killing someone and then kids getting run over who thinks of that? Like now, how did that even happen? Vending machine deaths happen in real life. When you when you shake a vending machine, <laughs> uh, either they're chained to the wall or there's always the potential that they could fall on you. And so they actually, there are vending machine deaths every year. I don't know how many it could be looked up, but there are a number of vending machine deaths every year. But did they shoot the Coca-Cola cans in the face in the girl? What's Brand, the- Brandon, you can look that up for me. Are there vending machine deaths? Yeah, if you want yeah. to look that up. I, do, I do like in both cases, there's Afterwards, something happening to both. There's, there's something happening to the penis in both deaths. So we can we can at least agree that a penis death is the most outrageous death. But this is the death by penis. Yes. The penis. Mine death is death by the penis. A penis killing balls. <laughs> He, he hated Maximum Overdrive after he made it and it tanked. That's yeah. why he never did anything again after that. And he, and he hated Dreamcatcher. Oh, that didn't help him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and he hated Dreamcatcher because he was on Oxys the entire time and he was mostly out of it. So that was kind of why it was it was so absolutely absurd and insane was because so he was these were both made during a bad period in his life. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's, that's all his you best stuff. Stephen King. That's his best stuff. I and, want yeah. him to have a miserable life because when he has a miserable life, he writes great books. On that note, okay. <laughs> Bravo. Good great job. Guys. Both death. Great death. Look them up. Go watch these deaths because they are very interesting scenes. Yes. I mean, I like. I watched. I rewatched them both before we did this because you told me you were going to pick these choices. Ah, the, they're both really hilarious. <laughs> but you kind of you kind of hurt yourself when you just sort oh, of said no. like, "Yeah, we've well, seen alien deaths." And then you really got her it kind of teed her up because, like, no, we've never seen an alien pop out of a butthole and, and eat someone's balls off. <laughs> and that sort of disaster movie approach kind of makes it even more of a top. Like, it's not a disaster movie. This is a real Stephen King movie done, like, by a real studio with real actors like Morgan Freeman and all these people are in it, right? It's like, isn't he in it? He, no, he was in the he was in, he's, he's was the main bad guy. Yeah, he's the bad guy. It's a big cast. Uh, anyway, it's kind of, it's crazy. Me. And so I got to give Lynn, you got the point. Congratulations. Okay. You okay. took that win, but Shannon, bravo. And you, you you already sort of earned a point from the first round. Quick, Shake it off. I love it. Fabulous, and the fact check, yes. do vending machines kill people? Two point two vending machine related deaths per year. 
two point two. Whoa. Just two. Whoa. That's why we should get the point. Two point two a year, so it actually. <laughs> no, that means it's not over the top. It does happen. Ah, Damn. No, the point, the point <laughs> Show me how many balls. aliens burst ahead of a butthole. And then alien dicks. All right, time for dicks. round three. <laughs> for our main event, we are going to ask this question: Is Disney destroying nerd culture? Fighting this will be a don. Are you saying yes or no? I am saying it is saving nerd culture. Okay. Not destroying. Not destroying. Okay, so it's saving nerd culture. It's not destroying it. And Sam, I assume then you're going to say that Disney is destroying nerd culture. It's going to be the same assembly line stamp, boring, rated G stuff going forward from here. All right. Well, this is a big bait. A lot of people have an argument. Let's set up the score. Here it is. War. I'll let you go first, sir. Sure. Uh, so Disney is is approaching Monopoly. They got Park Place. They got they got the whole board. Now they got all the Infinity Gems, if you know that meme. Um, with Fox, they're going to be pulling in and ruining X Men. God, so much. Uh, home, uh, Simpsons, Bob's Burgers. Um, essentially, they don't know how to create anymore. They only know how to buy other things. It's just, at the end of the day, going to become uh, uh, all under one person who may or may not have a vision, but it's all going to go through Bob Eager and, is this, and the board. Is this appropriate for children? Do we want this to represent Disney? And the answer is going to be no on anything fun or exciting, um, unless it's something that is just guaranteed money. And even then, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Okay. All right, Don, go ahead. So right off the bat, I'm going to have to stop you right there because Disney, I know, is going to take those other franchises that have been struggling and make them better. They have already have a formula that is working, and they're going to apply that formula onto items that have not been working. They even said, like with the Deadpool franchise, that they're going to still continue to keep that going. So, or they're going to bring that back down to a PG? I doubt that. They're going to keep that going as an R. But the fact of the matter is, Disney has expanded on something that has been a niche and for many years have been a niche that on the verge of falling out in a lot of times. With it, we've gotten basically to see the dreams of the things that we've only fantasized come to fruition. We've been able to see it hit the screen and see the stories that we've been looking for all this time. Now we can expand on that. We can now see the appropriate Phoenix Saga come down. I know that's going to be coming down. We can see the, the Fantastic Four that should be coming down, as well as we can see potentials for stories that we may have never even thought of uh, coming up uh, down the road and with other characters. But the fact of the matter is they've also brought us other factors that we never even thought of, like uh, I mentioned to you earlier on, uh, off camera, where we're talking about gargoyles and uh, Mighty Ducks. There are so many different things that not even the mainstream people have thought of that we would consider part of our nerddom. My children might love it. Your if children I will love it. But I'm here right now, and and I, so let me tell you, I had a dream because I watched a, a series of movies. Dream. <laughs> and not that, not that dream. Uh, although that's a good dream. I'm not saying anything about that. But I I would read all the books. I watched all the movies, and it was about it started. Um, although that wasn't the most interesting part, about a farm boy on a desert planet in space. Um, and it was tremendous, and everything surrounded it was tremendous, until somebody realized they had toy rights and turned Wookiees into Ewoks and made it a PG, a rated G f mess. But it was still great. I like spaceship battles. Star Wars has just been thrown in the dumpster by these guys. J.J. Uh, Abrams is great. He, he loved... Hmm? That was before Disney. The Ewoks, the... Uh, uh, agreed. You know. No, no, agreed. Well, just only the Ewoks. That's the only thing that was bad about the whole thing, and that was because he started to aim it towards kids. He said, let's make this a kid's thing. And rather than make it something like SpongeBob or, or Fred and Stimpy, that's more for adults, and then the kids are, kids are driven to it. That's also the um, prequels. The, 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 the whole Star Wars thing, this, this new generation of Star Wars, they got J.J. Abrams to just remake uh, uh, A New Hope plus one, everything plus one. Mm -hmm. um, and then they gave a no-name director who did Brick, which I liked. What a fun team romp. Um, it was, a, it was a more of a detective story. It was fun. But a guy who did nothing, I think Looper was the other one. Two movies, nothing. They put him in charge of, of the helm, and he tanked it. And every, it, they, sure, it made money, because Disney's an advertising beast. But they just, if they try and take on other things the way they took on Star Wars, 
It's just gonna. They just don't care. It's it's not. They're not fans. They're just trying to crank the most money out of it, and See, that's that, targeting kids. That argument still doesn't hold water to me because they give opportunities to a lot of directors that are going out there, uh, like uh, Ragnarok. I'm just trying to get where you stand so I get my notes properly. Sure. You're saying that they aren't. They're pushing away from daring aspects, but I'm trying to. Correct. And he pointed the point out: getting the director of Brick is a pretty daring prospect. That's not a money-making prospect, correct? I, I can also just throw my money in a trash can and see if it grows a tree, but it's not daring if it's stupid. Got it. they, okay. they, that's movies, what I'm understanding. Okay. Two whole movies? What? A, what? A, how daring? He wasn't proven enough, and that's too daring. Yeah. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts is I stand strong by the fact that Disney expands. They take what works and they make it better and they have the room to take those risks so even if they have like for what you're arguing financial excuses to try to trim the tree then that's fine because they're looking for items that are going to make it better for us the audience the nerds the ones that want to see these and to bring in other people to bring in communities and expand our friendships and our groups so can i give you both help me here sure. give me your give me the examples of why disney is tanking it i could get into that but at the same time i'm more concerned about what they're going to do with ryan reynolds um, and Deadpool, they say that, oh, no, we're going to accept him. Just like they said they're going to take this trauma director and put him behind the, the film of a, who cares, it's Guardian of the Galaxy, we don't care. It wasn't a gamble back then. It was just see what, see what happens, who cares. Now that he's, it's actually probably one of their most profitable franchises they got left, it really was a, uh, a major misstep to just get rid of him because, oh, it's Disney and it's slightly controversial. Ryan Reynolds had a movie where he fed dog cum eclairs to a rival frat. I do what is going that. to happen when Disney goes, oh my god, Ryan Reynolds, you made Van Wilder, the unrated edition, naughty, naughty, get out of here, you scamp, we're not doing rated R movies anymore. The argument could also be made that he made Green Lantern. Uh, hey, not, I'm not, I'm not saying uh, So if we're looking at just your past worse. records of uh, film routines and what right. uh, Disney's going to be like, well, he's a success here and a failure Disney here. Disney cranks out money. You're trying to argue that Disney is destroying uh, nerd, uh, nerddom. Yep, and I'll get to, that's, and my, that's my closer, I'll get to that. that. That's your, the whole entire argument dependent on your closer? My entire argument is dependent that they are not destroying it. That the entire, every single part that I'm arguing is that they are actually feeding the need to grow what it is to be a nerd. Yeah, they they no. make us. Oh. They don't make new nerd. They don't make new nerd stuff. They're not really? inventing what it is to be a nerd. No. They're buying everything it is to be a nerd. They're bringing the community in. The in. Putting a nipple on it. They're and bringing saying, this the is people all you get. in. Everything they don't need to gone. make new stuff. They just need to bring in more people to bring in the community. Buy everything, crank it through the PG rated G filter, and you get the same kid friendly, mom approved, boring junk that isn't fun when you're an adult. No All right, so Don is bringing a tap. Are you tapping in Danny? I am here? tapping in Danny. All right, we're if anyone wants to tap in, now's your chance to tell Sam if they want to. But go ahead uh, as, you're, for our, as we wrap things up. Oh, Danny, where, tap in. What, how, are, how, are they how are they not destroying nerd Okay, okay. I think right. this argument has gone a little left field as the topic goes. He, it seems to me like, Sam, no offense to you, but you're arguing how uh, Disney is greedy, and I believe that we all agree that Disney is greedy, but it's not necessarily killing the nerd culture. If anything, we're bringing new people in because it's making it G-rated. We have to pass down our nerdum to the children, and the way to get to the children is starting them off young. Like, I, I don't know about you, but I don't know <laughs> any nerd that has become a nerd from adulthood. They grew up in the culture, which means you have to bring them in as children. And for them to, yes, it may suck that uh, some things are like G-rated and we don't want it. But like, it just sounds like, you know, like a baby boomer complaining about the millennials and how, you know, oh, back in my day, we whipped our children and blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, science changes and like a lot of things change and we need to, uh, we just need to progress in a way that matches the way society is changing. We have to reach out to the children because if we don't, nerdum dies with us. All right, okay. and you just tapped in Shannon. Yes. Okay, Shannon, go so ahead. I have, we... I have several points to make, and I'm going to try to make it as quick Brief. as yes, I can. Go ahead. Okay, first point. Bringing in original people, saying it's just about the funds. I have worked at giant corporations. It is a trend for giant corporations to hire people that have zero experience so they don't question you. They don't have their own vision. So I see what you're saying about raising the kids young, 
but they need to have their own materials. Now, other point with formulas. Disney has tried over and over again to repeat a formula. They're a corporation, this is what they do. When Pirates of the Caribbean was successful, they tried copying that exact formula to make a Western series called Lone Stars. Mm -hmm. Sucked. It tanked. They yes. tried it again with Tomorrowland because you mean Lone Ranger, yeah. Lone Ranger, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Lone Ranger. It sucked. It tanked two hundred and seventy-five million dollars to make, and it made less than seventy-five at the box office. I Numbers, was, baby. Yes. I was so <laughs> devastated because I love westerns, and I'm like, yeah. again, because I wouldn't see one again. But you need kids to see different things that they're familiarized with. We're like, everything's going to be different. They're children. They have, they necessarily have not seen other stuff. Why don't you just stuff. keep repeating Star Wars again and again they, okay, and again? The, the original Star Wars came out in the 70s. I'm pretty sure most children weren't born that time. So it's new to them. It's, it's like new to them. Four, five, and six are still the best ones. And you know what? The, 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 new, the new Star Wars that came out, if they're geared towards the children, guess what they're going to do if they actually like it? They're gonna go back and they're gonna watch the old Star Wars. And then, you, guess what you created? A Star Wars fan. It doesn't matter if it's not original as long as you're bringing the people in so they can watch the other stuff. That's so they can appreciate. It's That's creativity. what we're talking about. We're, talking we're not about talking creativity about creativity. And nerdy. We're talking so about how you, Disney is can, destroying nerddom. Can and you it's tell not. me examples of creativity with Disney currently, either of you guys? Yeah, Pixar. Pixar. Pixar was <laughs> bought by Disney. It's, that one company it's, bought. It's, yeah. They they're bought they, they Disney like Disney bought Pixar for a deal. Oh, and the, but the new Pixar movies, the they're still Disney movies. It's still Disney movies. movies. Like they the new stuff, like um Toy Story Nine. <laughs> they've also been doing First sequels. Car Wreck It Ralph Cars is great. Wreck It Ralph is great, but it's that's great. Uh, Inside, it, Out. Inside Out is another good one. Those are new. That's after Disney has Cars bought two, out things. Cars and two, honest, Cars three. Oh, you know planes. what? Yeah, and that's planes. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. They don't know how to pick it. Finding side. Dory? Finding Dory for Christ's sake? Finding, Finding Dory was a great it was sequel. All right. Well, Finding they clearly Dory have good, good movies and bad movies. And so I'm just so I understand. You're another. saying it's all corporate greedy, but Inside Out is an example of Inside that came out. out of Disney. There's no, there's no original thought. Not a Inside Out is an original Inside thought? No. They bought the script. But it, it, yes, so, that's one. All right, so come on back in. Are you, are you finished, Sam? We'll have Sam. Do you want to have Don finish out your argument? Do you need good points? As we close this up, because I'm confused, because I just want to make sure I understand each of your arguments. Sure. You're saying Inside Out is not original ideas? It, it's, it, yeah, one in, one in a million. One in, so one it is. in so 30 to 40 oh, movies. Okay. Huh? The, the, by definition, that's original. Yes. <laughs> okay. So well, 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 let's flip that. Can I say that, that they, they make sequel, mo like a, a lot of really unoriginal sequels? Can we, can we, why don't we flip like, that argument? They, they, never, they do do that a lot. Everything's brand new and fresh, right? Well, and so does a lot of other mainstream cinema uh, producers. There's, There's not a lot of left. If you have a formula, Disney you have an item that... No, that, the, the Deadpool thing was a gamble that never would have worked on Disney. It, 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 Ryan Reynolds putting out, and, and more importantly, well, let me let's hear your closing. Yeah, 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 the, the whole concept is we talk about uh, nerd culture and what it is to be a nerd. Um, and I could, there's a very negative definition and, and fall in, in Merriam-Webster and you follow it with something that's a little bit more on point, but I'm going to combine them a little bit and say, essentially it's someone who is so into something, it's almost to the point where they're socially inept. Um, and it's some, it, it is, they are so into it, they are not into anything else. It's their main thing and they know, they know everything about it to a fault, um, to a major fault for some people. But, what is Disney really? What is Disney really moving towards and taking everything that, taking all of our childhoods, uh, and I don't want to say childhood, the things that were niche, picked on, comic books, video games, uh -huh. what are they turning it into? It's actually pop culture. Modern popular culture transmitted via mass media and aimed particularly at younger people. Disney, they're very good at that. What's the, the promise rings, whatever, the, all those, the band, when they were doing music for a while, the whole, the whole Disney channel. It's, it, Disney's making it for everybody, which is great. It's killing it as a, as a niche nerd thing, and there's got to be something creating new niche nerd things, but I don't know what's left. Minecraft? Okay. So you, your, thought? your argument of it being a niche nerd thing that was, by definition, almost negative. The fact that you were mm, focusing so hard I wish so it wasn't, hard but on, that is the definition. Exactly. Where they're flipping it into a positive. They're yeah, flipping it into something that people want to be part of, not just for like the pop culture of it, but it actually strikes their interest and uh, improves on their imaginations that wanting to bring in the communities. So in my argument of it, 
it's not just about the spread of it, but the uh, unification of it, how it brings people together and uh, uh, closes those gaps that were there from that niche that we had. Before, that was part of the stigma that you had your, your gym rats, you had your, uh, your, your jocks, you, you had your, your nerds, you had your uh, popular girls. Now, this is something that is, can be used as a bonding between them. And this is yeah. how we get those communities. Killing yeah. nerds. Which, hey, maybe it, they need to grow All up. right. You're out of time there. All right. That's, mm-hmm. This is bravo. Thank you. That's a deep, deep conversation. We just had deep our deep war. Uh, all right. So I think ultimately, though, I mean, here's where I'm going to go off. And it's a little bit of semantics. But I just you, I, I got stuck in some of your they, they kind of one up to you by the two things specifically. You kind of bit your own foot because you're like, oh, they're not taking chances. But then the guy from Brick is a huge chance. That was a really smart, good movie. And you did sort of prove they do take some creative choices, Inside Out, et cetera. Uh, there are, they have done a few. Um, I think you have a point. They're homogenizing the brands. But I think at the same time, it's not killing it. Yeah, it's just, um, it's just it's you know. Terrible. And I think, Dan, I really actually, su- I, I got to say, I was surprised, Danny. You did a good job. I'm like, I don't really subscribe to it. But I, I listened. And I believe, like, in a weird way, we are introducing to a new kid culture, and it's like weirdly enough, some kids like the prequels more than the originals. Like, that's not necessarily. I don't. I don't agree with that, but that's because now I'm old. Our prequel means I'm old, and they, you know, that they see their own thing, and they're going to do their own thing. And then you're right; they at least will go walk, watch the other ones if they enjoy it, and that is keeping sort of these things alive. So, surprisingly, I, I got to agree that was a good point. I got to team it over here. Uh, the AA meetings got the point. Bravo. <laughs> But very, very good conversation. What do you guys think? Tell us in the comments below. And who's been the best fighter? I mean, they've all been great. But who do you want? To, who, who particularly gave you a, a really fun uh, time? Tell us in the comments below. Um, now we are going to go over to our final mini game here. I'm so excited uh, to do this. It's called Who's the Best. Now let me explain this to you. Who's the Best is a game that I played when I was like seven years old. So I did this since I was a kid. My family can vouch. I would have a bag of action figures. And I would randomly pull out action figures and I would pit them against each other and ask my family at the dinner table, who's the best, George Jetson or Woody Woodpecker? And they didn't have to argue. We've tweaked it slightly, but in this final mini game, I'm gonna pick two random figures from this bag and I'm gonna give you a topic. You guys will work as a team to argue who would be the best at that specific topic. For the first round, we're gonna do who would be the best dungeon master, okay? Who would be the best DM for a D&D game, okay? I'm gonna pick two random figures here. Let's get in the bag and go deep. Ooh, <laughs> Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I like this one. This one's fun, everyone. Oh, that's okay, that's Wilder. option one. Let's dig in and get this deep. Something else in the bag. There's Gene Wilder, that's not uh, Johnny Depp, right? Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Pee Wee Herman, that is a good match. We have Willy Wonka versus Pee Wee Herman. Who would be the best DM? All right, uh, Adon, you're going to flip a coin so you can pick first. Heads or tails? Uh, tails. It's heads. That means Shannon, you get to pick. Pee Who would you Herman. like? Pee Wee Herman, that means you guys get Willy Wonka. All right, quick opening, and then you'll have a quick opening, and then we'll fight for 30 seconds. Go ahead. No one wants to be told moral lessons when they're playing D&D. They want to get drunk. They want to hang out with their friends. They don't want to get stuck in a tube and being told that they eat too much chocolate. They don't want to be reminded of all the faults that they do. Pee Wee, he's just a ball of crazy. The furniture's talk. It's all that. It's catered to to the players. It's like a playhouse. For, 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 uh, for, for D&D players, we can do whatever we want. Anything's possible. And it's dark. It's dark. <laughs> it's a wild, crazy mess while with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, all I'm going to get told is that I'm a bad person because everyone wants to be uh, the crazy people as players. No one wants to be Charlie. No one wants to be Charlie. All right, go ahead. Adon. Willy Wonka from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory it would be perfect as your DM. You want someone that will have order, will be able to control the game. He literally does that. He has a franchise. He has an organization. He has the Oompa Loompas. His entire uh, candy franchise is based on fantasy. He has a magic factory. And that, too. Chocolate. Literally magic. Where Pee Wee, I'm quite sure, is insane. (laughs) Uh, And if you want to go dark, his magic factory, we can argue he's killed kids. Um, <laughs> it is really DM dark. Kills he is, players he, when they have he has to. no question about killing whatever players he needs to in his game. What do you, okay, now 30 seconds on the clock. You guys can see the clock. 
Fight it out. Go. I don't want to be lectured. I don't want to be told and be felt like I'm being condescended to by my DM. It brings my spirit down. It's not why I play Dungeons and Dragons. I so want to play to have DM fun. With random noises is what you want. You just want to hear want... <laughs> oh, with, with imagination. Over and over again. And he teaches you a There's little no bit. There's no structure at all. Willy Wonka like, he, he's is a the equivalent player. of a slow is, team party also also one player, event at a right time. There. Can we can think on the fly? There Willy Wonka no can't because he punishes you. You have to be a real person. He really doesn't even think of the fight. He, he reacts. All sorts of Everything that's time. Wrong. You have to react Fuck. as time. a DM. Just react. Time. Time. He punishes you with time. death. I gotta say, they got me with the noises and the dark. He'd be really freaking dark because he murders the kids. <laughs> oh, I gotta go Willy thing. Wonka on that first one. He gets, he gets uh, he'll go in the Jurassic Park Jeep here. Oh, that was really good. That's how you play the game. Bravo. Right. Chaotic neutral player, I'm all just right, saying. Alright, mixing up all my which toys. Uh, Alright, round two. The next question is going to be, who would have the best diary? Okay, who would have the best diary? Let's do that one. That's what I wanted yeah, to do. Yeah. All right, getting this, the timer up so you Someone guys will be ready. All right, who's best diary? I'm going to shuffle or these Andy. in there. Oh, Deadpool. I hope we get a good one to match the likes of Deadpool. I'm doing it. This is fabulous. Oh, two sociopaths. Cartman <laughs> and Deadpath. Uh, Deadpool. Ooh, Deadpool. Way to go. Uh, this is fun. All right, who would be the best? Cool. Make the best diary. You picked first, right? Who could pick first? Last they one. Did. They did. They so picked now first. It's your turn. Who would you like? Deadpool. Deadpool. That means you guys get Cartman. Uh, you get the first argument, Danny. Go ahead. Ooh. So, let's just say we've we've got like all kinds of elements. Yes, he's crazy, but he's also like a little bit dark. He's struggling with cancer. We get to listen to that story from a sociopath. How many sociopaths do you know that has cancer? Name one, please, because I would like to hear this story. Okay. I, I don't know a lot of sociopaths, but uh, <laughs> personally, just personally. I'm right uh, here. Car <laughs> they blame Carmen, that's the thing. Carmen <laughs> is, is, if nothing else, imaginative. Mm. And he likes to reinvent his world to see it the way he wants to see it. His writings would be insane and entertaining, like a little, th every day, a 30 minute Isn't he like a fourth grader? craziness. <laughs> um, yeah, he's but he's probably he's the most. Yeah, he's probably like thirty now. If you count like, how long the season. Yeah, we're been not we're not counting that. Dead, Cartoons don't age. Deadpool, unfortunately, I don't think he's even literate. I don't he think he's he is definitely he knows he how to write. He thinks in yellow bubbles. No, that's, I think, mm. and then he forgets what he wrote. He no. was thinking a second. He ago. definitely. First of all, he's like the only comic book character that actually breaks the fourth wall, so he knows he's a comic book character. So you can't downgrade him just because he's fucking crazy. He's still smart. I didn't say crazy, I said illiterate. All right, no, here's he's your 30 not, he's second smart. timer. He your 30 yeah, second timer for everyone to chime in. All right, Make a count, go. here we right, go, right, right, and right. time. Deadpool's not gonna write a diary, he's just gonna have sex with Vanessa the entire time. Nope, not true, absolutely not. It would just Absolutely be like not. half written and then he's off doing something Vanessa's else. dead. She's dead now. So, so she's not. Contrary. Contrary. We she's Deadpool back actually time. does have a diary he come because back he gets yeah. shot in the head so many times he needs something to keep track. I would want, yeah, I would, right. he would have great artwork, he would do doodles. His diary His would diary have artwork. It would, it's still a diary. Even if it's written in crayon, there's still words. There's going to be even be pictures. It's going to be a freaking he would picture book. He wrote 10 He's, seconds later. It Carmen doesn't matter. He's so already he wrote it. Time. Carmen's I didn't hear cold. enough what Cartman would do. Uh, do I don't know that? what he, you didn't yeah, tell me. He yeah. murdered Scott Tenenbaum and fed him. I mean, his parents and met him, made him eat that. You need not to tell Scott me Tenenman, some of the atrocities that I'm going to hear. I heard more from Deadpool. Uh, Deadpool gets the point. Cancer and, wins. That means Deadpool team won. Meetings. Yeah. You won the oh, round. We didn't even need the round. third round. You did it. <laughs> Bravo. Yeah. That is fantastic. You guys crushed but it. But seriously, round. though, cancer. It's not funny. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's, read about it's that. not funny. It Good point. Nice you only said that on the time, but if this, these rounds are timed. Deadpool is the journal we're going to watch. And thank you all for watching. Tell us in the comments below who you want to see back. What debates should we do? Movies, TV, video games, all of it's fair game. We're not afraid of any topic. We'll do it all here. So drop some ideas down below. Thank you all to everybody for coming. Danny and Dunn and Lynn and Sam, Shannon and Andrew and everybody in the audience. Jose and Juan, thank you so much for coming and helping. And Anthony, who didn't get to come, but has helped before. All the whole crew and happened to help us help me here in the theater. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned. We'll be back next week with more Nerd Wars! Woo! Woo!